All right. So what we're doing today is something I think is pretty fun. Sometimes I'll just do this for my own uh, interest, for no particular reason at all. I just think it's kind of fun. Uh, and But it's also very useful, and that is Monte Carlo simulation. And the point of Monte Carlo simulation is that uh, we are going to try to take some estimator for a test drive to see so, sort of how it performs, uh, what it does, uh, and if, you know, if we can put some sort of flaw in the data that violates one of the assumptions of our estimators, we can see how much that actually affects our results. And you can see why this might be useful, right? When we are doing econometrics, what we're trying to do is we're trying to discover things about the data, right? We have some sort of data. We want to understand, you know, whether X causes Y or how these two things correlate together. Uh, but in order to do that, we need to use estimators that come with assumptions. And so if we get a result, uh, you know, is that result coming out? Is that actually revealing something true about the data? Uh, or is the estimator not working properly, right? Is, are we violating an assumption? How, how much of an effect is that violation going to have on the actual result that we get? Enter Monte Carlo. The way that you do Monte Carlo is you start out by generating your own data so that you know what the actual truth is. And then you see how closely your estimator can get to the truth, okay? So that is what we are doing. Uh, so we're gonna start out by generating our own data. We're gonna then use an estimator. In this case, I'm just gonna use an OLS estimator. Uh, and we're gonna see how close that estimator gets to the truth, okay? So uh, the way that this works is we're gonna do this over and over and over again. And then once we're done, we're going to store all of those results that we get and then see how close they get to the truth, right? Look at the distribution. So uh, what I'm going to do is first we're going to start out by clearing our data. And then I'm going to create a place for me to store all these Monte Carlo simulations because really I'm going to estimate the same thing on a different random data set a bazillion times. So I need somewhere to store those results while I'm doing that. So I'm going to set my observations equal to the number of Monte Carlo iterations I want to do. So let's do local Monte Carlo equals 1,000. Okay, so I'm going to do this 1,000 times. I'm going to generate a place to store my data. So I'm going to generate, um, let's say, data store blank. I'm just going to store one coefficient in there. Uh, and then that's it. I'm ready to go. Okay, so then I'm going to start looping over the Monte Carlo. So I'm going to do four values. I equals one, two, mc. Okay, and so I'm going to do this mc times. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do preserve to store, uh, to save this data storing data set that I have open right now. All right, so then I can go back to it, deposit the estimate that I get, and then come back. And okay, now, we are now going to get to the point of creating our true data. Okay? Uh, so we're going to clear again, and uh, I'm going to set the observations to some number. And what I, let's let's think about what we're actually going to test here. So we're going to we're going to violate an assumption of an estimator and see how much it affects that estimator. So let's just do OLS here. It's simple enough. But let's think about OLS. So OLS assumes that error terms are normally distributed. Okay. Uh, but we know that that's not always the case, right? That's that's just an assumption. In the true data, the error term might follow any number of distributions. So let's change the distribution of that error term and see how much it messes up our estimator, okay? Uh, so uh, we're going to create some random data. Let's say that our random data has 2,000 observations in it. Why not, okay? Within that data, uh, let's generate some random data. So first, let's generate a random x variable that we're going to use in our regression. Uh, now, to generate data, you're going to need to have a little bit of information about Stata's random number generators, uh, one of which is rnormal, which I'll be using in a second. But if you go there, you can click there, and you can see all the different uh, kinds of random data that you can create, and there's a lot of it, right? You can create normal variables. You can create uniform distributions. Uh, you can create beta distributions, binomial distributions, whatever you want, all sorts of stuff, okay? Um, but So right now, for x, we're going to do a normal variable, rnormal. And let's make it, uh, let's say it's got uh, some variance bigger than normal and uh, it's got an intercept. Why not? Okay. Great. So now let's create the error term. We determined that we're not going to use a normal distribution for the error term. Uh, instead, let's uh, let's do a uniform distribution for our error term. Why not? Uh, and let's center it around zero. So I'm going to do generate my error term. Set that equal to our uniform, which will create some uniform data. Uh, but of course, it goes from zero to one. We want it to still, let's still center it around zero. Let's still have it be symmetrical. So let's do subtract 0.5, so it'll be centered around 0.5, or centered around zero instead. Now, here comes the important part. We're gonna create the true model, okay? This is the model that we're gonna be trying to match with our Monte Carlo results. 
Uh, if we don't match it, that means that we know the estimator was bad, right? Because we know what the true model is, and we can see what we estimate, and if those two things aren't the same, we know which one's right. The right one is the true model, and we failed to match it with the estimator. Right? That's the nice thing about Monte Carlo. So let's generate our true model. Let's say y is equal to, I don't know, 3 plus uh, 4 times x plus e. So ideally, we're gonna, when we run OLS, we should get a coefficient of 4 on x. Okay, so we've generated our true model. Now let's run our regression. Let's regress y on x. And now let's store the coefficient on x. So I'm going to do local um, x coefficient is going to be underscore b, and then in square brackets, x. So what this is saying, I want the, the beta coefficient, the b, the beta coefficient, and I want the uh, coefficient that's on x. So I'm going to store that. Oh, you know what? Why not? Let's get, the, let's get the constant in there as well and see if anything weird happens with that. So data store for x. And let's have a generate data store for the constant as well. OK. Uh, and let's do local x constant, or just constant underscore beta. And then if you want to start a constant, it's the same thing. But instead of x, you do underscore const. I'll do it for you. OK, so now we've got our things stored into memory. Let's now restore our data storage that we created up here. And let's fill in some things. So we're going to do replace data store x equal to x coefficient in i, that's going to do it in the ith observation, so it's going to start in the, in the top, and it's going to the second one, then the third, and then the fourth, and so on. And we'll do replace data store const equals const in i, okay? And then that's it. Let's close it. Now this would run. Works perfectly fine. Let's add in a couple other bells and whistles. First, this is going to run a thousand regressions. We don't need to see that, so let's wrap this all in quietly. And then uh, we might as well, you know, we want, we want to know how long we're going to be waiting while we wait for this to run. It could take a while. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this uh, check uh, whether or not uh, uh, every, every 100 times it's going to let me know what's going on. 100. So I'm going to check if I divide this by the, the number of times I've done it by 100, and then take the floor if that's equal to if I just divide it by 100, which will tell me that it's been exactly 100 times. And I'll do noisily display. Working on number i out of mc at the time s time. That'll tell me how long it's going to take. Okay. Now, once this is all run, I'm going to want to compare it to the truth. So let's take. A, we're going to take a look at uh, those results. So hopefully, the constant will give us a three, and the x coefficient will give us a four. So we're going to do summarize of data store x and data store con. Now let's get that running and see what happens. And it should just work. Uh, so uh, it's going to take a little time to run. This is, of course, very simple, so it's not going to take very long at all. We're going to finish uh, before too long. And hopefully, we will see uh, that even though we have violated one of the OLS assumptions and we've used a uniform distribution for our error term, we will still hopefully get a 3 uh, constant and a 4 x coefficient. And in fact, we get a 3 for our constant and a 4 for our x coefficient, because that distribution of the error term in OLS only really cares uh, when you start doing hypothesis tests. So the standard errors will be wrong, but the coefficients will still be correct, which is in fact exactly what we found. And this is, you know, this is the kind of research that you would do, right? You'd say, I know that this assumption is wrong. Is that going to affect my results and how much? And we would just find in this particular case, oh, I guess that's an assumption I don't need to worry about too much for what I want to do. Uh, and that's basically it. That's all that Monte Carlo is, right? This part in here could get a little bit more complex, but that's the basic idea. Um, and uh, let me show you, before I go, just one brief example of when I've actually used this. So this is an example of a Monte Carlo that I ran uh, because I was worried that there was something biasing my results. Uh, and in particular, uh, is, this was a uh, model of how long you stay in school, uh, was the estimate that I was running. Uh, and the way that the data was set up is that you, you know, that you're, it's censored, right? Once you stop going to school, I can't see your observations after that. And the way that I was running the particular model was not a standard way, so I was worried, okay, well, am I biased in some way, right? Am I creating some sort of mechanical relationship? And so I was like, oh, well, I violated an assumption. Let's check Monte Carlo and see if anything happens. So uh, same thing's happening here. I'm generating random data, right? I, up here, I have a place where I'm going to store the data. Uh, I then create some of the pertinent variables. I know that seven, only 7% 7 of the sample is women, so I make this female variable only uh, happen for 7% of the population. Right? This is going to be a binary thing, because it's going to generate a random uh, number. And if it's like 0.9, it'll say, that's not above 0.93. It'll give me a 0. If it gives me 0.95, then it'll say, ah, oh, that is above 0.93. It'll give me a 1. Uh, I, I generated panel data here by creating multiple years 
uh, for each uh, for each person. Uh, if you want to create panel data with a Monte Carlo, by the way, one thing that you can do is generate the individuals and then use the expand command. Just look into that one, and that will create copies of your observations, uh, which you can then assign to be different years. But anyway, in this case, I also then assigned them to different groups, companies, uh, and then I did my regression, basically. And uh, I did my regression, and then I went down and I checked the density of uh, what I had gotten to see how my coefficients varied, right, and whether or not I was actually getting to that true value that I had created in this, right? So in this case, the effect of being female, the true effect of being female on continuing to stay in school was negative five percentage points. Do I actually see that the effect of being female is five percentage points, which is what I want? Uh, and looking at the distribution in general is a good idea. So in this case, for example, we could look at a kernel density of our distribution. So let's take, let's look at it. So let's see how data store looks. And let's also look at how the constant looks. Let that run for a second. And we see that there, uh, our, our uh, x coefficient is pretty tightly distributed around 4, but our constant's a little bit wider, uh, which is interesting. So if you were particularly concerned about those distributions, you might have that be some good information for you. All right, that's it. Go out and do some Monte Carlos.